I'm Janos Wilder from the Carriage House. So excited for this partnership with Tucson Medical Center. We're really looking forward to bringing you some healthy recipes, some cooking tips. Here's to healthy living, healthy eating, and some fun cooking. So I went to the market today and I found these great heirloom tomatoes. So we're gonna make a salad with these. We're actually gonna make a version of an Italian bread salad called a panzanella salad. An Italian version, it's crusty bread and tomatoes and maybe cucumbers, but we're gonna regionalize this. We're gonna take, bring this home to Southern Arizona. We're gonna use these great heirloom tomatoes. We're gonna to use roasted chilies, queso Oaxaca, beautiful mild cheese, sort of like a mozzarella, some scallions, some red onions, and then we're gonna make great garlic croutons. We're gonna to toss that all together. So we'll get started with the tomatoes. So for the tomatoes, I wanna cut wedges. So I'm gonna cut the tomato in half, take out the core, and slice wedges. Not too big. It's kind of bite-sized, but I don't want them really tiny either. You know, these tomatoes are so juicy, and I want you to get the full allotment of juice there when you bite into them. So these are all actually different varieties of tomatoes. These green tomatoes are a little more sour. The red tomatoes are the, are the sweetest. Then these orange tomatoes are really very, very nice and sweet. And these green tomatoes are a little more sour. So when you talk about heirloom tomatoes, what that refers to is tomatoes that are anything that are the same seed lines, unadulterated seed lines that have gone back for generations and generations of the, of the fruit, or, or in this case of the, of the tomatoes. And that's really something that's important because nowadays we're breeding vegetables to all be the same. So it's nice to have some diversity and some variety. It adds to flavor, it adds to your pleasure, and they sure are beautiful and taste good. So these are the sweetest of the tomatoes I've got here. Now I'm gonna take the Anaheim chili. So this is a, basically a mild chili, particularly this time of year. In, this, in the fall though, in the fall be, be, be a little bit wary because the Anaheim, that's harvest time and that's when they're at their hottest. The heat from chilies comes from the capsaicin. That's the active ingredient that gives chili its heat. It resides mostly in the white membranes and the seeds. So I've taken the membranes and the seeds out of these chilies, you see? So we've got these chilies pretty much seedless here. So it's mild, but it's still got great flavor. So you've got the nice vegetal flavor and a little bit of heat from the chilies. And again, I'm gonna cut these up, but I don't want them a really fine dice because I want you to really bite into them and experience that. It's not so hot that it's gonna burn you by any means. So again, we removed the seeds from the chilies. We roasted the chilies to take off this peel to the skin from the chili. So this is already looking really pretty. You've got these different colored tomatoes in here. You've got the roasted chilies in here. I'm gonna add the queso Oaxaca. That's the really moist, creamy Mexican, fresh Mexican cow's milk cheese that's a lot like a mozzarella. Add some chopped scallions to that. And then I wanna slice the red onion. So we peel the red onion and we cut it in half. And then I'm just going to slice it down like this, pretty thin. We're 
break those onions up a little bit so you have just a little sort of julienne strips. That's going to be enough. That's so pretty. And then I've got these fresh basil leaves here. And the basil leaves, I'm just going to tear into here. I'm not going to chop them. I'm not going to use a knife. I'm just going to use my fingers because as I do this, we really start exposing more of the oil which from, from the basil, and that's where the flavor is. And sort of releasing that and pressing down on it, releasing a little bit more of the flavor. That's what I want to do here. And this is also a really rustic sort of a salad, so that's another piece of this that's important. Okay, we're going to leave this now. We're going to put it aside and we're going to make the croutons. So, sort of a French bread. I'm using ciabatta here, but just some sort of crusty French bread is what you want. Not white bread, um, nothing soft. So you want sort of crusty. We're just going to put this in this bowl. A little salt. A grating of fresh pepper. olive oil, and then garlic. So we're these garlic croutons after all, right? So we're going to put some good amount of garlic in there. You may want to make more of this than you think you're going to need because you're going to eat it. You're going to pick at these all day long. Pretty well coated with the olive oil. Okay. Then put this on a little cookie sheet pan. I'm scraping out the garlic. I'm gonna get all of it. Oh yeah. Want a little bit more pepper. Okay, now we're going to put this in our oven. I preheated this oven to 425 degrees, so we're going to put this in here for about four or five minutes. We're going to check it after two minutes because we might want to turn them. So I'm going to check them out after two minutes. We're going to let that go for a couple of minutes. We'll come back and turn them and see if they see if when they're ready. Let's take a look. Oh yes. So look at these, they're starting to brown, just what we want. Let these go just another minute. Okay, we're ready to go here. These are beautiful. Now when they start to brown, they go pretty fast, okay? So be careful when they, keep an eye on these. So. You could let these cool. You're probably going to have a couple of them right now, just when they cool down, just so you can get them in your mouth and you've got that hot oil and that olive oil, oh, and that garlic. We'd let these cool down, but I'm just going to show you this now. Okay, so now we're just going to make the dressing right in here. We're going to start with a little virgin olive oil. So I've talked about this, we've been using the extra virgin olive oil. What does that mean? That means it's the first cold pressing from the olive. It's the very first juice or oil that comes out of the olive. Cold pressing means that there's no heat applied. Heat brings out more juice. So this is the purest, the best oil that comes out of the olive. That's why we use it. This olive oil has the most flavor. But we only use it when we're doing something raw like this. We wouldn't be cooking with this olive oil. We're using it mostly in dressings. So the ratio for when you make a vinaigrette, again, is three parts oil, one part vinegar. In this case, this is balsamic vinegar. Oh, that came out fast. I'm glad I had my hand on that. 
So balsamic vinegar is Italian vinegar, comes from Modena, Italy. And it's made from, it's made like, sort of like sourdough French bread is made. It's made from a mother. So there's actually, the, the casks of balsamic vinegar, they start from the same little batch of leftover vinegar and they use the same one to flavor the vinegar and it's, and it's aged in wood casks. So it takes on really fantastic rounded flavor. It's not a super sharp flavor. They can they make really aged balsamic vinegars that they sell for super expensive and they're wonderful. And some of those aged balsamic vinegars, 18, 24 year old balsamic vinegars, you could have them on vanilla ice cream and you'd be very happy. Okay. That is so pretty. What a Beautiful salad. So this is our heirloom tomato, roasted chilies, garlic crouton, queso Oaxaca salad. Here's to healthy living, healthy eating, and fun cooking. <laughs>